Hello, hello, good evening, everybody. Let's go ahead and get started. I don't want to waste any time because if you're watching it on replay, I know it's so, you know, to watch all this stuff in the beginning kind of drives you crazy. All right, so I have my kit here. If you got your kit, it came in a pizza box. And we have our instruction uh, or our page with all of our information. All right, I'm going to pull all this stuff out so that we can um, work. One of the things that I do always say is to have a plastic bag, a plastic trash bag, like an unopened, like an unopened trash bag or plastic sheeting or something like that is always good for your project because I also have a tarp underneath here and a double layer of plastic because sometimes the resin will run off onto your workspace underneath. Um, all right, so you have an inspiration photo here and then of course the photos online. You'll have cups. You'll need these to elevate your piece when you pour resin. All right, so we've got our little plastic drops. I call these raindrops. I don't know what they call them in real life, but I call them raindrops. Then we've got some crushed glass. You'll have a mixture of blue and silver and white. And then we have these little beads. These things are crazy. They will bounce everywhere, so you have to be careful with those. And there I say gloves. Your art resin packet will set that aside for later. You'll have a gold leaf sheet. Yours may just be in a cardstock folded over. I got the bright idea toward the end to stick it in an envelope. So I said wait to open this because gold leaf flies everywhere. So even if it's in a cardstock, just a piece of cardstock folded over, hang on to that for a minute. Then you'll have your transfer sheet, which you can use this over and over and over again. And then your template. So the first thing I want you to do though is remove the backing remove the not the backing but remove the board from the frame it's going to make it a whole lot easier to paint without getting uh, paint on your frame we'll set that aside and then we have our board i'm going to transfer our image onto our board you can freehand paint this if you want or you can transfer and i'm going to transfer this so i'm going to just kind of line it up and then trace around it. If you're okay, so after you transfer that, just move that aside. Make sure your transfer paper is the darkest side down. If it's not showing up, you can check it. If it's not showing up, you need to turn your flip your transfer paper over to the other side. You know what I'm saying? Because this side, this side has the graphite on it, and this side doesn't. And you can reuse this a million times. So hang on to that for another project. All right, so let's go ahead and get our paints out. We're gonna be using Payne's Gray. Um, I'm gonna be using Ultramarine Blue. And you don't need a ton of this paint. paint you don't need a ton of this paint. Um, just a little. And if you're using craft acrylic paints, that is perfectly fine too. I put the names of the colors in there as well. Uh, Naples Yellow. I like that buttery yellow color. And then we're gonna use some, um, I think I put raw sienna. I'm actually using raw umber, but really any brown color will work. Okay, I like to start with the background, with the darker color on this. Um, I'm just gonna get my brush a little bit wet. And I have a flat brush here. You can use any brush you've got. I'm gonna start with my Payne's Gray right here. And I'm gonna paint down here at the bottom and go up. Paint from the bottom and go up till I get to about the wing. This area down here is going to be dark. Just painting this paint's gray. It looks black. It's a dark, dark blue, but it's really going to make this um, resin and glass sparkle. The black, uh, not black, the dark blue background, navy blue. Black does too. Really, um, those dark colors really enhance the resin. I don't like this brush I picked. I'm going to pick a different one here in a minute. I don't know why. I don't, I don't like this one. Y'all have favorite brushes too, don't you? Favorite brushes. Okay. Okay, then I'm going to reach in here and get my um, blue, my ultramarine blue. 
excuse me, and I'm going to paint up here around the top corner a little bit. Come in by these, by these, um, I didn't rinse my brush or anything. I got a little bit of water on it, but I didn't really rinse it. We're going to do both sides at the same time so that they match, okay? So I'm going to come in here in the top corner and come down a little bit. We're going to add some white in here in just a second. I'm going to blend this ultramarine blue with my paint's gray as I get down here. Okay, I'm gonna come in here with some white and a little bit of water and just kind of make this all kind of blend together. I want my background to blend, blend together this dark Payne's gray navy blue and this ultramarine blue up here. Just want all these blues to kind of mix together and love on each other and make this really pretty ethereal background. Soft and magical and all of that. So I'm just mixing some water and a little bit of white paint all the way down to here little more dark paint. So you get this kind of blended in and you get a look that you really like for this background. See how all that works together? Who did I? So I'm gonna balance this out on both sides. I love this ultramarine blue, but I'm going to add in my white too, a little bit of white, what my background to be. And it's okay if you come in too close on the angel wings because we can paint over this background as we get down here to the... I'm moving kind of quick. You don't have to paint this quickly, but if you paint quickly... <laughs> have you ever heard the phrase, <laughs> if you don't know what you're doing, it's best to do it quickly? <laughs> have y'all ever heard that? I think you make fewer mistakes in painting if you paint quickly. And I'm, by mistakes, I mean, I think we all, um, I think you get a better result. I don't mean fewer mistakes. I shouldn't have said it that way. I think you get a better result if you paint quickly. Because you don't have time to fuss and fiddle with every little thing. I like to use my whole arm when I paint. Yeah, happy mistakes. There you go. I like to use my whole arm when I paint. I like to, not just my wrist, you know. So I think when you're painting like that, um, the opportunity to, um, to have more interesting strokes occurs when you're quick, when you move along quickly. Plus then your paint stays a little bit wet and you get, um, you get a little better blending. Okay, so I'm making this go a little bit lighter as we get up here behind our angel. Okay, now I wanna paint, I'm gonna rinse my brush out. And I want to paint um, behind her head, which is her halo area. So I'm going to take my white and I'm just going to put a little bit of white down here. I'm doing strokes that start in her head and kind of go up. Like, you know, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I'm just kind of making some wild and crazy upward strokes, right? And then I'm going to take this yellow, this Naples yellow, and come in here and create this glow behind her. You see the glow? I'm going to get in close to her head. I think you'll find you get a better result if you use your entire arm. I'm going to take my white and go from the top down so that I get a little bit of a contrast with the white and the yellow. I don't want that to be solid back there. You know what I'm saying? Now I think on this one, I have a little bit of blue coming in from the top too. Here's my, here's the sample. I have a little bit of blue coming in from the top. You can do that too if you'd rather. If you'd like to do that, you can totally do that. I'm gonna leave this one kind of white because I like the way it looks. I've painted this probably five times and it looks different every time. And I love that about it. Especially if you're making these for like a vendor event or for gifts. 
having them look different every time makes them more personal, makes them more unique, makes them more special, you know? So, and even if you're doing it for yourself, if you're just doing one of them, that's cool too. Okay, look at that. Here's we have our halo painted and our uh, background painted. Now I'm gonna go on to this dress. The dress is light blue. So you either have a light blue craft paint or you're gonna mix one with your white and your ultramarine blue. I absolutely love this color. It has just enough, it's, it's just warm enough. It has a little, like a little bit of red in it, just naturally the ultramarine does, has a little bit of red in it. And it makes the most, it's the prettiest like periwinkle shade, I guess you could call it. I don't know, I love this color. So we're just gonna paint her dress. I did rinse out my brush because I didn't want this paint to be green. So I rinsed out my brush from the yellow and went to my blue, if I didn't say that. Sometimes I forget what I've said. I know I'm not the only one that does that. <laughs> I know I'm not the only one. So we're just gonna paint our dress. Now I'm gonna do this part up here, which is, I need a smaller brush. Let me get my smaller brush. Um, we're gonna do this part, which is her dress, her gown, this little V-neck part. I got a little too much blue there. I add a little white to that. There we go. And get in a little bit closer so you can see. <laughs> I'm just going to mix some more of that gown color and just a smidge of Payne's Gray. And I'm going to go in here and make it just a little bit darker on the gown behind her arms. Okay. Then I'm going to paint her arms. I'm going to come in with white just to show off her arms a little bit. That'll add a little bit of contrast. She's going to be holding a star as pictured. And the star is in your bag of goodies. But you can use any object. One lady at the um, Red River Retreat had a brooch that belonged to her mother. And the angel was holding the brooch. And that was really sweet. And um, another lady had the angel holding a piece of glass, um, uh, a glass Cinderella carriage type thing that was broken off, and so she was holding that. Okay. So I've gotten in kind of close there. I've made the white, I've made her arm kind of whitish so that we can, the sleeve there, so that it stands out a little bit. Okay, and I kind of want to draw, I kind of want to paint some folds or highlighted folds in her gown down here. So I'm just going to take a little bit of white and this skinny brush. This is where my, my trimmer really shows up is when I try to do straight lines, but you get it. And sometimes having a shaky hand is, a, you have an advantage with that. So if you have a trimmer too, <laughs> I see you and sometimes shaking like this can be, can work to our advantage. Get a little bit of water on there, but that's okay. Okay. So I like adding a little bit. Now I'm going to mix a face color. So your face can be any color you want, right? 
I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and a smidge of brown. That is too much brown. And we're going to make what, what is kind of a flesh color. Okay, if you have pink or red at your disposal, you could add a little bit in there. So I'm going to, I'm going to grab just a smidge of red. I have this um, permanent Alizarin Crimson. I'm just going to like just a, a smidge, like a tiny, tiny smidge on my plate. I didn't put this in the paint list because when I painted the one that I showed you, I didn't even use red because I was trying to use as few colors as possible. But if you just add just a tiny bit in there, it's going to give it a little more, whoa, that was too much, a little more luminosity. It's going to make the skin just a little bit brighter. Okay, there we go. We're just going to fill in the face area there. And you can have your neckline come down if you want. We're going to form that um, chin using our the hair. Okay, so now I'm going to mix my brown and this yellow because I want to get a softer brown. If you want an angel with black hair, make it black. If you want an angel with blonde hair, make it blonde. If you want an angel with white hair, make it white. I color my hair very regularly, and I'm hoping in heaven I won't have to do that. So I don't want to have white, uh, white hair in heaven. But if your angel has white hair, I hope she doesn't come back to haunt you for not covering her gray. Gray can be beautiful, just not on me right now. Okay. So do you see this, how I came in just a little bit? came in just a little bit to create that neck. You don't have to do that. That's just an extra little thing. Come in just a little bit. The pattern, the, the template is there just as a guide. If you want to do curly hair, if you want to do some other hair, go for it. Go for it. If you want a hair parted in the middle or pigtails or whatever, just mix some more brown. I'm going to go in just a little bit to create that neck and then come up with my hair. All right, I'm adding in a little bit of this yellow, Naples yellow, just a few highlights from my girl here. She went to the salon. No, she's in heaven. She does whatever she wants, right? If she wants hair with highlights, I feel like she's going to get that because she's in heaven, right? Okay, so now I have this neckline that's kind of weird. So I'm going to take my color that I mixed for my, um, I don't know if y'all can tell that it's kind of weird or not, but I'm going to take my dress color and I'm just going to clean up that neckline just a little bit. It's really not that important. I just, there we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, now let's paint our wings. They're going to be white. So I'm going to come in here with my white paint. Even though my board is white, I want to cover up. I want to, I want to come in here with my white paint and make sure that my board is covered. Because sometimes when you put resin on a board that is manufactured white, the white is more chalky and it kind of disappears under the resin. Not all the time. And I don't know that, I don't think it does on these boards, but you still want to be sure it's covered. Be sure it's covered with your paint. Now, I want this to kind of come down a little bit more. So some people, you know, we all do our angel wings differently. Some people like to have them shaped a little bit different. This is your project. You do whatever you want. You don't have to do this exactly the way that I have done it. Turn my board a little bit so I can. Actually, I'm gonna turn it around this way because I went that direction and the flick of your wrist, your hand, and you go one way and then come back the other way, it's, it looks different. And I kind of want a little more consistency with that. All right. 
We're getting there. You can follow the pattern exactly or do your own thing. So you just want to kind of make them even, but they don't have to be even. They don't have to be even. I feel like when I'm an angel, which I don't know if we turn into angels or not, it doesn't really say that we do, but I want to believe that we do. I feel like when, when I'm an angel, my wings are going to be crooked because I've kind of lived my life that way. Everything's just a little off. <laughs> so I think I'm, my wings are going to be crooked. Okay. So now, now we can add our gold leaf. Okay. So you'll have your gold leaf sheet. Get that ready. And then I'm going to take this Aliens Tacky Glue. You could also use a glue stick. Okay, so we want to make sure this is dry. Let me use a little bit of glue. You don't need a ton. And I'm just going to take a brush. You can use your finger. If you're using a glue stick, you can use that. Oh, that had um, paint in it. I don't want to do that. Oh, hold on. I found a, a brush that doesn't have paint globbed up in it. Okay, so we're going to brush this out almost like it's paint okay we're gonna smooch this out from the head do the same thing that we did with the yellow and get in there kind of close you do need to make sure that your white paint that all your paint is dry okay before you do this I'm gonna probably make a mistake here because my white paint is not dry. But you have a gold leaf sheet. You have a whole sheet of it. You don't need a whole sheet. You just need like a tiny, tiny bit. Turn off the fans in your room because this stuff will blow everywhere. I'm not kidding. It'll be everywhere. Turn off the fans. Make sure that nobody's walking up behind you sneezing. And you're just going to pinch a little bit of it off like that and set it down on that glue. Do it while your glue is wet. Now, if you're doing like a gold leaf frame or something, you can't really do it this way because it won't stay there forever. You have to use sizing. But since we're putting resin over this, this works perfectly. Either a glue stick or some kind of tacky glue like I'm using. And I just like for it to be kind of floaty and random gold leaf is like one of my favorite things to use i love it so much try to use it as much as possible and i also like to kind of smush it and move it around and let it be like kind of broken up you know what i'm saying like you see how i did that just then it's kind of hard to catch on camera because it's yeah they're so fun to use too i like to kind of smush it around see if I can get another little piece here. I don't want it to look like flames necessarily, although we really don't know what halos are like. Just like for it to be kind of random. See, I've gotten some there. That's okay though. If my paint wasn't wet, that would not it wouldn't stick, but my, pa my paint's still wet, so it's probably going to stick out. Okay, that's all I need for this. The other thing I want to do while I've got this out is find my star. So, the star is inside this bag of crazy little balls. And some of them are gold and some of them are silver. When I ordered them, I didn't realize that it was like a half and half package of gold and silver. But again, you can use whatever you want. And you could even use it silver if you wanted to. But I'm going to do the same thing with this. Put a little bit of glue on here. It's a little too much glue. Put a little bit of glue on here. Just use my finger. Um, okay, then once I've got that star with glue on it, I'm going to tap this down over the top of it. 
cover that whole top. All right, let me put this away before it blows away because I know my air is going to kick on here in a minute. And then you can use a dry brush um, or whatever to kind of press that um, down onto the just kind of taking away the excess leaf there. Pressing it down, taking away the excess gold leaf. If you want to paint it gold, you can. If you want, whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to do. Kind of push it in because you don't, if, if the corners aren't showing, it's not going to look like a star. We're going to set it down right on her hands. Get that where we want it. This needs to come off of there. And this one does too. Okay. So there we go. She's holding her little star. We're going to put it back inside the frame. Let me move the star. Make sure the top is at the top. <laughs> the frame is going to help hold in this resin. We put the resin on the back, on the front. <laughs> the frame's going to help hold it in a little bit. It will drip through. That's why I told you to make sure and have plastic underneath. It will drip, drip through a little bit, but um, for the most part, the frame is going to kind of keep it there. If you wanted to paint your frame, you absolutely could. The other thing I'm going to go ahead and do is put these cups down, kind of like little table legs. Okay. <clears throat> excuse me, kind of like little table legs. And we'll put our star back on there. There we go. Um, cut your wire in half and you'll have one and a half yards. We're going to take our one and a half yards here. Okay. And we're going to make that half. Fold it in half again. Fold it in half again. Here we have this. We're going to tie a knot in this. And it's not that hard to do. He just, this, this wire is super pliable. There we go. Okay. I'll do it again for the other wing. And then I just make that knot, knot kind of tight. You want it to be tight. Okay. Let me do the other wing. Okay, one more time. That's why you want to start with it being even, because if you don't start with even lengths, it's going to be hard to make a match. Again, my, my wings are probably not going to match, but <laughs> we'll make hers match or as best we can. And one more time. And then after the fourth, when it's this length, the fourth fold, then you tie it in a knot. And I'm telling you, I tried it two or three different ways. And I thought this way was the prettiest. You want to make sure, you want to try to make sure that knot is in the middle. Okay. Pull it down tight. If you can't manage that, if you can't seem to get it in a knot or whatever, it would be fine to leave the little open ends. That would not be a big deal, but I like the little knot on it. Okay. So then we have two pieces that look the same and we're going to treat these the same. Okay. So one loop on the top and one loop on the bottom. They're, they're on top of each other, which is fine. And I left those as a loop. And then these other ones I cut. Okay. Then you kind of wrangle them around. Is that one cut? Yep. Kind of wrangle them around, straighten them out. If your wire is knotted, I've got a knot on this other wing. I'll show you. You can just smooth it out with a pencil or um, paintbrush stem or something just by doing it like this, almost like you would curling ribbon. That's how you can get them really nice and straight. Press your thumb and something, something sturdy and pull out. All right. Do the same thing on the other side so that we just kind of have a clean... A, a fresh canvas with these wires. All right. So now you can kind of manipulate these however you want. I liked the look of them being curled. So 
I'm going to take this paintbrush. See how the paintbrush gets bigger as you go down the, the handle here? It starts out smaller and gets bigger. If you have a paintbrush like that, that would be great. Some of them aren't like that. Some of them are kind of the same, the same distance. But if you start with the small end and you roll up and kind of go toward the brush part, you're going to end up with a softer curve. You can do them like that. I did some on a pencil um, so it didn't get smaller. I did some just with my hands. I'll show you. I like the ones I did with my hands better because I liked them kind of wonkier. So I just grab, pinch, pinch the end and roll it around. Like so. Same thing here. Pinch the end and roll it around. Just like that. That's kind of wonky looking, which honestly, I'm a, I love wonky. Look at that. All right, let's do the next one. This part's honestly probably going to take you longer than painting. It's taken me long, longer than painting. Now, if you want this to be a little bit bigger and rounder, oh, look at that. So then you can manipulate it however you want. Okay, let's so do this other side. Sorry that takes so long, y'all, but I'm having fun. I am having fun. So I'm going to pull one, one piece out for um, the looped part. And you can look at the picture and kind of see how I, how I um, did the sample piece. But I really encourage you to kind of do your own thing. Y'all know I love it when y'all make your own kind of designs. And then I'm just going to cut through these, cut them all at once. This, this is so, don't want to cut that one. This is so easy to cut through. And if you do cut through them all, that's fine too. You don't have to leave one of them. Wire is so much fun to use with resin too. I think it just... I love, you know, I'm a mixed media girl, so any kind of mixed media, anything else you can add to add another texture layer, another dimension, another bump for the resin to go over. Now, let's see, I have a bigger, I could use this if you have a bigger thing to wrap that around. I use all kinds of tools in ways they were not intended. You've got... goes this way doesn't it pulling these out you want to kind of match them up close enough right this is one of those fiddle projects you can fiddle with it and then you can go back and fiddle with it some more at some point you just have to go okay I like it it's good <laughs> I do always recommend kind of taking a picture from above of your glass piece um, because it helps to kind of see where everything lays. But, um, you know, in this case, it might help you see balance, things that are balanced or unbalanced or whatever.
there we go. We want to line up where they're laying. Okay. Then the next thing I want to do is add these little, um, these little plastic drops, raindrops, if you will, whatever you want to call them. I'm just going to kind of sprinkle them down in here amongst these wings. I just kind of think that the texture of them is soft enough that it feels, it feels like wings for some reason when the resin is on it. I'll show you what it looks like when the resin goes on it. See that? So they don't really necessarily look like circles. They just look like texture. And I love any kind of texture under glass. I mean, under resin. I'm kind of pushing the wings down so they're not like sticking up too high. The resin's going to cover them, but you do want them to be like against the board as much as possible. And some people get kind of fixated on making sure that these little drops um, are flipped over. I do not do that. I kind of like them to be every which way. And they can come out here into the background if you want them to. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. Okay. Then we're going to do this bottom part down here. All right. I'm going to do this first. This stuff along the bottom. You don't have to use it all. You can just use some of it if you want to. Whoop. But... I like for it to look like she's like, you know, floating. So I want this to be like she just materialized out of, out of this brokenness. All right, we do that part first because this next part, these bounce. They go everywhere. So I'm going to kind of sprinkle them in down here. And you'll see what I'm talking about if they escape. Because I do like them to go up. Oh, there we go. So I'm just going to tilt my board so that they roll back down a little bit. They're like bubbles. I love them so much. So now you want to make sure that everything on your piece is completely dry. You don't want wet glue. You don't want wet paint. You don't want anything wet when you get ready to do resin. If you need to let it set overnight, fine. You can do that. You don't want, you just want to make sure it's completely dry. It'll ruin your resin if it's wet. This is art resin. If you've never used art resin, oh, it's the best thing in the world. You're going to be addicted. It's wonderful. Okay. So you're um, going to cut the little, the top off there and you'll have uh, the outer bag and you'll have the inner bag. And this is all the information. If you want to read about it, um, this is a really safe product. You still want to wear gloves. You don't want to get it on your bare skin. You need to make sure everything's dry, and then you're going to pull this clip out. Sometimes it's harder than other times. And when you separate this, when you pull this out, then this part A is mixing with this part B. So you have the resin and the hardener, or the resin and the hardener, I don't know. But either way, you're going to mix it together. Alexa, set a timer for three minutes. You're going to mix it for three minutes, just like this. It's the safest one out there. It has no VOCs. It has the highest UV rating on the market and it's food safe. It is approved by the FDA for food safe usage. So um, if you put it on a cutting board or a platter or something like that, it's great. Um, it's just, it's wonderful. I have asthma and art resin does not bother my asthma at all. Um, it's just an all around great product. It's made by artists for artists. So. If you don't use art resin, you're missing out. It's the good stuff. Um, so you just want to massage this thoroughly for three minutes. Three minutes. Chris, all right, we're going to cut the corner off of this. Again, you want to make sure everything's dry. Can't emphasize that enough. You want to make sure it's elevated up on the little cups. And you want to make sure that, um, that you have plastic underneath. We're going to cut a tiny, tiny, tiny snip out of that corner. I mean tiny. Okay? Little tiny, tiny. You just want a tiny drizzle. And we're going to cover the mountains first. So whatever is up the highest, we're going to cover it first. It's just like rain. It's going to come down and it's going to cover the board. But you want to cover the mountains first because if you just start covering the board, you're not going to have enough resin to go back up to the mountains. All right. So our mountains are going to be 
these doodads down here at the bottom. And we're going to drizzle. If you want to tape off your frame for this part, you can. I like to live on the edge. So if I get a little bit of resin on my frame, I can just sand that off a little bit with my um, sandpaper or an emery board. It comes right off. Or if it's still wet, sometimes you can wipe it off with a wet wipe. So I want to make sure all of this is covered. And see how those little beads kind of disappear when they get resin on them? Let me make sure I get up underneath there. You'll have just enough resin to do this piece. So you're not going to have any left over. So you, that's why I said you want to make sure that you get your high areas first. Now, I don't know if that was enough time for my glue to dry, but for the sake of this project and this video, we're going to go ahead and we're resining anyway. So if you're, if you do this live with me or follow along, give yourself a little more time to dry. Um, we're going over all these high parts. We had a few people at the retreat in person that ran out of resin because they cut their hole in their bag too big or they, um, for whatever reason, um, didn't distribute it correctly. So that's why this is really important. Resin's expensive. It's not a cheap product. It's not a cheap craft product or art product. It's, it's not cheap. So, um, you want to take care and conserve as much as possible. I want to make sure that we get every bit out of this. We're going to cover our these parts here. It does seek the path of least resistance, so it's going to drain down and it's going to it's going to get this board. Um, going to get this board covered eventually. I'm going to roll this down kind of from the top. Push all that resin down into the corner. We have plenty of resin here. You can use a popsicle stick or just your gloved finger to kind of cover up some of these areas that you feel like need a little zhuzhing with your, for your resin. Take your time, get all of it. Also, the warmer your resin is, the further it's gonna go. If your resin's really cold, um, it's not gonna go as far. My hands are really warm, so all that massaging of the resin really helps to warm it up. Don't put it in the microwave or anything like that. But So I have this little silicone tool that I can use, but you can also just use your finger or a, or a popsicle stick or a tongue depressor or the end of a paintbrush. You can tell this one's got a lot of resin on it. <laughs> this one laid in resin at some point but I'm just gonna push this up to the edge just to make sure that the resin covers the whole board. A little bit on her face, a little bit over here. Look, that was plenty. So if you run out, you can always borrow from Peter to pay Paul and kind of try to push some from the center out, push some from the from the, you know, wherever it's heavier, you can move it around. Move it around on the board. It's going to, it's going to fill in any gaps eventually because it, like I said, it wants to seek the path. It's like Cairo syrup, seek the path of least resistance kind of. So all of this is covered. I made sure to get down in there. Now, if you want to manipulate some of these and have them 
have some of these little bubbles. Now that they're covered in resin, they'll kind of they'll kind of um, move around pretty easily. You could use your finger or a popsicle stick or end of a paintbrush to kind of move these around and move them up into the background a little bit if you want to. These parts of her cloud or whatever you want to call it. And then I kind of like them coming up, you know, a little bit from her, from the bottom down here. Ooh. You have about 30 minutes until it starts to really set up. Once it starts to set up, you won't be able to manipulate it. It won't be, you know, as wet like this. And then if you want to make any adjustments, now is the time to do that. She's got a little space there that doesn't have any resin. You know, if you want to move her wings around or anything like that, you can definitely take care of that stuff now. Thank you. All right, so you can see how shiny she is. Now, she's, she might have some bubbles. She probably won't have very many because those little packets don't allow a lot of air movement around for bubbles. But if there are bubbles, you can always take a lighter, like a stick lighter or a butane torch and just pass it over the top really quick. In my membership group, because I have the glass and resin membership group, I use a torch and I just kind of pass it over really quickly and it pops all those little bubbles. Pops, pops, pops. If you don't have access to a torch or that scares you, you can use a heat tool. Sometimes this will get the bubbles out. Um, they'll also move the resin around, so be careful about that. Most of the time, art resin really just kind of the bubbles pop themselves. It doesn't happen often that you'll get bubbles that, that don't want to pop, so or that don't pop themselves. There we go. There we go. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you all joined me tonight. So you'll want to leave this somewhere to dry, undisturbed, for about 12 hours. Um, like I said, it'll be cured this time tomorrow. Let me, um, I'm going to take my camera out of the holder here and kind of show you at an angle what it looks like because, you know, the, the wings are not buried in the resin, okay? So I don't want you to be nervous if your wings are sticking up. They're just coated in resin, and then the knot is connected to the board, so it's not going to go anywhere. And then you can see the, the halo, the gold leaf. There we go. All right. All right. Thank you all so much. I hope you have a great evening. Thank you all so much for joining me. Bye.